vertebrobasilar insufficiency is basically a drop in blood flow in vertebrobasilar complex into the posterior circulation. So when the blood flow drops, there will be problems, right? There will be ischemia or loss of blood supply or loss of oxygen and, and, and nutrient to the areas that are supplied by that. The second question that I'm going to address is the question on vertebrobasilar insufficiency. Be, to discuss that, let's start by what is vertebrobasilar artery complex or vertebrobasilar arteries. So blood supply of the brain is, we divided into two segments or sections, we call interior blood supply and the posterior blood supply. Let me share my screen and pull up some images to try to make more sense of it. All right. So uh, the blood flow of the brain, uh, let's uh, start uh, maybe with uh, this picture. So here you can see that the blood flow comes, a pair of the blood vessels called carotid arteries, which are common carotid and they divide into external and internal carotid. And internal carotid is the one that gradually goes into the brain and supplies the frontal two third of the brain, you know, this all areas by the inter internal carotid arteries, which are coming from the interior part of the neck. While in contrast, there is also the uh, another arteries that are coming from the back of the neck, um, running in the vertebral column, uh, literally within the foramina in the bone. And then they enter from the back of the brain and they supply the posterior one third of the cerebral cortex along with the cerebellum and the brainstem. And that complex is called the posterior circulation. So this is the anterior circulation, posterior circulation, and there is a junction between the them between the two circulations, anterior posterior, which is called the uh, watershed area, which is where there is uh, space between first and two. Now we're going to focus on vertebral basal complex, which is the uh, posterior uh, circulation. So vertebral arteries. There are two vertebral arteries given on each side uh, from the major blood vessels of the heart. These vertebral arteries uh, run in the vertebral foramina, which is small hole in the lateral pedicle of the uh, cervical vertebras. It goes all the way up to C2, and C2 uh, is where it then comes out of these vertebral foraminas where it was running, uh, and then slip over the C1 and enter through the vertebral foramina in the skull base to enter into the uh, brain cranium on each side. And after they enter, and this is how it comes out, slips over, turns around, loops and enter. And after it has entered, it uh, gradually comes together to join each other to create a single artery, which is called the basilar artery. Now, exactly when they join, it uh, varies uh, from patient to patient or person to person. And they... Um, they can give off blood vessels, and they often do before they join in the cerebrum, and they are sitting right on the brain stem. So if we pull up a brain stem, uh, let's pull up this picture. You can see that this is the spinal cord, and the spinal cord is ending into medulla, and the medulla is going into pons, and then above pons will be the midbrain that is not visible here. This is the pituitary gland. Now, these vertebral arteries are coming together. They are giving off a blood vessel from each side, which is joining to form the interior spinal artery for the cervical part of the spinal cord. It's also giving off these arteries right here. Let me see if I can make it bigger. Open the tab. So this is the vertebral arteries coming out. This is the interior spinal artery they're giving off right at the base of the medulla or start of the medulla. And then they are giving off uh, here in this picture, you can see they form the basilar artery first, and then they give off the first branch, which is the posterior inferior cerebellar artery or pica. So this is going to the cerebellum and inferior surface of cerebellum supplying there. Now, sometimes this pica is actually given off of the end of the vertebral arteries just before or as they are joining to form the basilar artery. This basilar artery then runs along a groove at the superior surface of the medulla to through the pons all the way up to the midbrain and at the end of the midbrain after giving off multiple different branches, it divides into two arteries again, and now they are called the PCA or posterior cerebral artery, PCAs. A PCA then have the PCOM or posterior communicating artery, which forms the circle of villus. So PCA. So this is how the posterior circulation is going. Vertebral arteries come in, they start giving off branches and join to form basilar artery, single artery, this single basal artery, then ends into again two arteries, just like it started, 
and which are the PCAs. Now, it I have never seen where these basal artery never forms and they remain co completely separate all the way to PCAs, but the vertebral artery junction to basal artery can be very high up all the way into middle of pons. So the basal artery length it varies from person to person very significantly. So this is the vertebral basal artery uh, complex, posterior circulation of the brain. So it is supplying this, the top end of the spinal cord, so it's supplying the medulla, supplying the pons, supplying uh, the midbrain, and then giving off the PCAs to supply the posterior one third of the cerebral hemispheres, which is the uh, mostly the occipital lobe, basically. And um, vertebral basilary insufficiency is basically a drop in blood flow in vertebral basilar complex into the posterior circulation. So when the blood flow drops, there will be problems, right? There will be ischemia, or loss of blood supply, or loss of oxygen and and, and nutrient to the areas that are supplied by them. So it is the brainstem, the cerebellum, and the occipital artery. Usually, the most sensitive part of among all of it is probably the cerebellum and maybe some areas of the uh, brainstem. And when you have a drop in blood flow ischemia to these areas, you will get stroke-like symptoms, TIAs, so transient ischemic attacks, and TIAs of the posterior fossa, cerebellum, and brainstem will often be uh, cerebellar features like unsteadiness, nausea, uh, vertigo, double vision, dizziness, uh, so on and so forth. So, you know, you can, swallowing problem, so on and so forth. So that basically is the vertebral basal insufficiency, uh, which is often because of a stenosis, depending on where the stenosis is, the symptoms uh, may be different than one person to the other. Usually the stenosis is in the basal artery itself, it, but it could be either at the bottom of the basal artery to start, which will be give a lot more cerebellar symptoms, or maybe all the way up to the top of the basal artery, and where it will give more of a midbrain symptoms and not that much of a cerebellar symptoms. But usually, when we talk about vertebral basal insufficiency, we're talking about cerebellar syndrome with basal artery stenosis, causing a lack, lack of blood flow to cerebellum and, and up, upper pons, midbrain kind of an area. All right, hopefully that was helpful.